hi guys welcome back <laughs> to the channel if this is your first time thank you so much for stopping by and thank you for clicking on this video so <laughs> I'm on spring break so this week I decided to try the new DTF um, method of sublimating on cotton before I begin I just want to give a big shout out to Yangza Creations Tanya her name is Tanya from Yangza Creation and making with Marilyn so making with Marilyn did a video showing how to use DTF and I happened to ask a question if it can be done with a 9 by 9 easy press and she was so very helpful thank you so much and Tanya saw the the video and my comments and decided that she would show me how it is done with a small heat press so decide so today I decided I was going to try <laughs> and let's just say mm, oh wow let's just say it didn't work so well in my favor no this is what I came up with so I I wanted to put this design on a tote bag and so I decided I, I got a cotton tote bag and I decided that I wanted to put this design on it when I saw that it wasn't going so well I decided to use something a dish dish towel that I have at home just to see what happens no I did this about three times and trust me even this one did not come out so well so in this video I'm going to show you what I did and hopefully hopefully there's someone who could help me because this is not going so well let's just say at one point i sh thought i would have to call the fire <laughs> the fire company <laughs> i thought i was gonna call the fire truck to come and put the fire out in my house so let's get into the video and i'll explain a little bit more <laughs> Okay, so I started by printing out my design using my sublimation um, settings. Okay guys, so the printer that I'll be using today is the Epson ET2803 pin printer that I converted to sublimation. And the DTF film that I'll be using is that of Yamation. Now, based on the videos that I have seen, um, I have heard persons saying that sometimes their printer doesn't um, catch the paper because it's too thin. Now, this is what the paper looks like. And on the paper, it tells you what side is the side that you're going to print on. So this side, so if I should take out one of these film, this side would be the printing side. Now I'm going to try it by putting um, taping the paper on it like this. And I'm going to see if that works. Okay, so I know that this method worked for many persons, but it did not work for me. What I did was that I just put the, f the film in the printer and then I held on to it and then it just feeds through. It was as easy as that. Okay, so here I have, this is the powder that I have. I don't know if it will work. Um, and they said you should apply it when it is still wet. Okay, so, and do not touch the image. So I'm gonna take this medicine cup and I'm going to apply it over. Okay. 
and what you're gonna do without touching the ink you're going to coat it so it's well coated Now this you could reuse, so I'm going to put it back in the Okay, so the next thing I'll have to do is cure it. So I'm going to try it this way first and see how it works. I have my heat press at 385 degrees I'm gonna give it 30 seconds first not sure if this is gonna work so what we're doing is we're trying to melt the that does not move <laughs> Let me increase the time. up my heat press <laughs> okay so this is my failed attempt number one <laughs> my heat press touched it so I'll have to think of a different way to cure this whole thing so I'm, I'll have to go and print this again and then I'll try another way Okay guys, so this time around, I took a tray that I have at home and I wanted to um, make the film a little bit closer to the, the, the heat press. So I used this metal um, thing I had at home and, and this um, wooden ruler. So I thought because those are good conductors of heat, then it would have worked. But boy was I... <laughs> boy was i wrong because i didn't realize that the book that i used was actually plastic it was plastic i did not i wasn't even thinking that it was plastic and i could not use it so when it was there yes it was activated and i think i had um i put it too close also so when i was there thinking that maybe it was you know doing well and i took it off i realized that the my it started messing up my heat press again and the book started to burn honestly i don't even know what i was thinking now look at my heat press and then the book <laughs> the book started to melt so i had to think of another way so i went ahead and i did the process again this time i used the same method but i just put the um the film inside and i waited and i waited and i waited and nothing happened so i ended up putting another book there 
and it worked a little so guys i i think something is happening it is not quite there yet because if you look at this one that it was closer the the colors are more vivid i did mess up this <laughs> i did mess up this one also this was the first try and um i think it needs to go again so i am going to do it again okay guys so after so many failed attempts <laughs> even this one is a fail um it was my first failed attempt i while i was hovering the heat press over it trying to stay close and i got distracted and looked away and the ink touched this part it messed up my my um printer my heat press <laughs> so i said i was gonna try it another time so i cleaned my heat press and this part i used the tray and i stacked a book underneath it and guys honestly i wasn't even thinking that the book was plastic and it burned through the book and it messed up my heat press and it looked like this so that's fail number two this is also a fail too because if you notice while um while i was hovering again so this time i put it on top of a book but because i put it down in the tray like this so this is the tray this is the tray and i put it in the tray like this but I realized that the heat, it wasn't moving at all. It wasn't budging. So I put another book on top and it, it came up. I raised it up a little bit and it started to do something. It still did not um, do it properly. And my heat press touched this part too. So this is the best that I can do with, with, this, with this right now. I will have to find another way so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna see if this will transfer anyway so i'm gonna cut around this i'm gonna see if this is gonna be able to um <clears throat> press onto as um a surface and i am going to use this kitchen towel that i have this kitchen towel that i have if you notice it's not cured completely because there's still some here but i can't do it anymore i can't i've been at this for a long time and this is the towel that i'm gonna use to try i'm just testing it out to see if it works uh i can't even turn it so that the blue is not in it but you know what I'm gonna put it down and I'm gonna use my heat tape I'm gonna use my heat tape I'm gonna press it just to see what happens so I have my heat press at 335 degrees and let's see Let's see what happens. It looks bright but I but I know that this is a cold peel so I'm just gonna leave it to cool off and I'm gonna see what what happens okay so let's let's see what happens what? <laughs> oh my god it didn't come out bad at all <laughs> 
is. <laughs> so remember I told you my heat press touched this part of it. So here it doesn't have color. It doesn't have col color there. But look at this. Ignore this right here. I didn't want to put it on anything um, too expensive that I had. So I just put it on this um, um, washcloth that I have. Look at this. It did come out well even though um, it didn't cure very well. So this is it. I'll try again. I will try again. I'll try another method to see if I could cure it with the um, nine by nine that I have. So until we meet again, <laughs> I'll see you in my next one. <laughs>